welcoming in Awkward Insurance Peeps. I'm Dustin Bryant, one of two awkward hosts. Kat Ferris is the other. Hey, Kat. Hello. I am so excited about our guest today. I have been a proverbial fly on the wall watching and listening to this guy from a distance, which sounds a little bit stalkerish. But I met his podcaster partner, Scott Howell, last year at the Insurers of Tennessee event. And now he's currently on my computer screen and will soon be in your ears as soon as I let him start talking. So Bradley Flowers from the Insurance Guys podcast is here with us today. And I couldn't be more nervous and excited at the same time. Welcome to the show, Bradley. What's up? I'm uh, extremely uh, humbled and happy to be here. It's always good to 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 not be the host and just be the guest. So it's a lot it's a lot easier. I'm more nervous when I'm the guest than when I'm the no, uh, the host because I don't know what I'm gonna say. I got you. Yeah, you know I'm uh when I do these little speaking engagements or whatever for these state associations, I always tell them like I'm at my best. If you just give me a stool and have somebody ask me questions, that's awesome. I don't, I, I, I don't even have to prepare. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. That's my, uh, that's my jam. Well, that's what we're gonna do today. So Bradley is a nationally recognized insurance agency owner and business enthusiast. He runs the day-to-day -day operations at Portal Insurance in good old Mobile, Alabama, a scratch independent agency that he founded and is building on the back of social media, personal branding, content, and technology. Can you say hello, New Age Insurance, and how refreshing to be able to use all of those platforms to build your brand? I'm glad my mom got my bio to you in time. <laughs> Reading it I want to make sure I get this right. <laughs> so he also let me know that in 2019, Portal Insurance was named the Agency of the Future, which I have a ton of questions about that, from Safeco Insurance for the Southeast United States, the Southeast of the world. No, no the United States. In 2020, he became the subject of his YouTube series, Making the Donuts, or Portal Insurance rather became the subject of that, which that's a really fun YouTube channel, by the way. And I don't watch YouTube very much, but it feels a little bit voyeuristic because it is so raw, seems unedited. You can let me know if it's edited or not, but it just feels like I'm video stalking somebody <laughs> around in their life because it's, it's like a window. What is up with your YouTube channel? So now actually first, when did you start your YouTube channel? A long time ago, I uploaded the worst video you've ever possibly seen of, uh, there was this app that would let you, um, it was like an augmented reality app that you could like film something and put like a dancing person on the video. And it was Christmas time and I was at another agency at the time and I did a video of two dancing reindeer uh, in front of the sign. And I, I don't know what, what compelled me to upload it to YouTube. I think the app had a, uh, had a, 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 like a default feature where it would upload and create a channel if you didn't already have a channel. And, uh, you know how sometimes you'll save files and it'll put a, it'll title it like something that's like two feet long that makes no sense. That's what it put as the title of the video. And I was just like, yeah, let's go with that. That's good. <laughs> uh, so, so technically the channel was started probably like 20, 15 ish, something like that. Wow. But we really got serious on it, I want to say about a year and a half ago. And yeah. you know, the whole thing with, with making the donuts is um, so I have had a videographer for a couple of years and uh, he was just sort of remote. I would film videos and send them to him and he would edit them. And then we brought him in house and we brought him in house. The first thing we wanted to do was a weekly vlog. Um, and the reason, or there's two reasons why we do it. One is, um, a story I like to tell, and I'll use this. I have two versions of this story. Uh, since you're you're in Tennessee, correct? No, I'm not. You're in not Tennessee. in Tennessee. Okay, I well, I met you in Tennessee, so like, we'll go with that. I just I have this way of inviting myself places and making it awkward because I thought that was going to be like a, a big event, and then I found out it was really exclusive to the young insurance agents after I had already invited myself, and so I felt like I was like wedding crashing. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Uh, anyway, so, so a story I like to tell is me and my wife went to the Jack Daniels Distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee a few years ago. And um, if you've ever heard me speak, this is going to sound like a broken record because I tell the story a lot. And we go through the whole thing where they show you how Jack made the whiskey and why he did it this way and like start to finish, like the whole process, right? And they tell you why it is the way it is. And at the end, you get to taste the whiskey. 
Uh, so we did that. And then later that night, um, we met up with some friends at a party who had been there earlier that day. This was actually a carrier trip to Nashville. And I'm not a whiskey drinker. And a buddy of mine that was there was not either. And he's like, man, do you just want to drink some Jack Daniels right now? I'm like, I kind of do. And I couldn't figure out why. And it was because I knew the story of the behind the scenes of this is why it has this taste and so forth. Um, so, so the epitome of drinking the Kool Aid. Yeah. So <laughs> the main reason for making the donuts in the beginning was we wanted to show people the behind the scenes of the agency. That way, they had some sort of af uh, affinity to our company, and it's happened. You know, we've had people call here for quotes, and they're like, "No, I want Kenneth because I saw him in this episode or whatever." So that's reason number one. Reason number two is I think it'll be really, really, really cool for my kids or grandkids one day to look back on it oh, and yeah. watch it. So that's that's kind of why we do it. Um, he's here. So I have a, a, a marketing agency as well that we do content creation for insurance agents. Um, that's not a plug. Uh, we actually have a very limited amount of clients we can take on. But so he's here anyway. So I'm like, if you're here, we're going to do a vlog. So that's kind of the, the deal. That's awesome. And what's really interesting about that is I was super resistant to doing a podcast when it was pitched to me. And I was like, I don't really like to put myself out there. I'm really kind of reserved. Like I've got all my Facebook accounts and everything else on super lockdown. Like you can't even find me unless you want to. Well, now it's it, like my name is all over Google from having done this podcast. But then I got used to it and I thought, I told my daughter one day, she's 11. I was like, well, now if I die, you can just listen to my voice over and over and over again. She's like, mom, that's, that's super creepy. Very morbid. <laughs> but it's true. But you have the same thoughts too. It's, it's like, true. you know, your kids can, can see daddy whenever they want to now. <laughs> Scott has a story that he tells. Uh, he tells it on stage and it, it really happened, I think, where we were, he and I were going on our way to a speaking event for Keystone uh, in Vegas a couple of years ago. And uh, it was the first kind of like big event we had done together where we traveled somewhere and his mom like sent him this long text like, I'm so proud of you getting to speak at this conference. I would love to hear you speak one day. And he's like, here you go, mom, www.theinsuranceguyspodcast.com. Okay. <laughs> I've been doing it for three years. You can listen to it. You know? um, yep. So anyway, but yeah, it's it's kind of cool. You know, it's uh, probably for me the biggest uh, the biggest anxiety I get around the podcast because it's so permanent. And if you try to wrap your head around how permanent it is, it'll freak you out, you know? Um, okay, so but let's not go biggest, into that because okay. I have enough freak out. Well, moments. I was just going to say, like, my biggest fear is saying <laughs> something today that is, oh, I say, know. okay to say today, right. but the status quo changes and three weeks from now, I wasn't supposed to say that thing that I said. Right. And, no, um, cancel culture is real. And yeah. Well, not and not really not really cancel culture, just more like like saying, Oh yes, um such and such is a good tool for agents to use. But then that company starts doing things that's not in the best interest of agents. And some agent comes down the rabbit hole yeah. of the podcast and listens to that episode and signs up for that tool, even and though I wouldn't tell them to do that yeah. today. That's a really good example of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That yeah, that's a great example, especially in your reach and everything that you do through your podcast. That's a wonderful example. Thank you for letting us know about that. So the making the donuts, I'm gonna go back to that for just a second. The the episode that I first happened upon was the the what was it law and for portal law and portal yeah. So I grew I don't know how old you are, and I'm not gonna ask. You can tell me if you want to, but I grew up with reality TV. Reality TV is my TV. That and Saved by the Bell. But it was like MTV, real world, and then, of course, Cops. Cops was everything mm -hmm. when I was growing up. And so when I saw that episode, it was almost a little nostalgic for me. But then, like I said, a little voyeuristic, too, because I've seen your face before. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I, I mean, I don't know you, but I feel like I know you because I've been sort of kind of not really cyber stalking you. And <laughs> you know, now I'm seeing you go through your daily life. With, I think it was Ariel. Was that Ariel that was on that episode? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So, I, and then I saw it. So, it was really kind of cool. It gave me all kinds of cop vibes, honestly, especially yeah. so since we, it starts out with you driving your car. <laughs> we, we started that. Uh, I think I watched Law and Order and I, and I came to the office and I told Grant, I was like, we need to remake the Law and Order intro for this. And, you know, in the insurance world, da 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 da. 
We actually got a uh, copyright infringement claim on that video on YouTube Ooh. Um, for the for the music. Uh, but the way it works on YouTube is uh, if you use uh, if you use copyrighted material, you just don't get the ad revenue from that video. Um, it has oh, to go man. to the original creator, which we're not doing it for the ad revenue. I would rather I would rather have a funny piece of content that I don't get paid on than the opposite, you know? Yeah. So like I said before, you're also the co-host of Insurance Guys podcast, which is one of the, if not the, most listened to podcasts in the insurance industry. You have that, correct me if I'm wrong, you have that on Spotify and um, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and SoundCloud. I have tried to practice that (laughs) word specifically several times because it keeps coming out SoundCloud. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but your podcast, you have interviewed hundreds of people, including, correct me if I say this wrong, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, David <laughs> Meltzer, and Jesse Cole. <laughs> and so that's why I'm like super excited and kind of nervous. I said before the podcast started that I get a nervous bladder and I don't get one often, but I get one with, <laughs> with Bradley on the podcast because you are just, you're everywhere and you're awesome. And I was talking to Kat just before you got on here about like really what we wanted this podcast to focus around. And it's hard to get a focus on you because if there's any such thing as um, as targeted ADHD, like, man, you go in so many different directions, but you do it in a really good way. Like it's when I, when I traditionally think of ADHD, it's you start something and you forget to go back with it because you started doing this and then you went over to that and like everything is left unfinished. But you have got so many juggling balls (laughs) up in the air. I was just going to say balls, but I thought that was going to like come out all kinds of wrong. Uh, But you you are juggling so much in the air and nothing is getting left behind. It's all moving, in my opinion, in in what I see. It's all still moving in the right direction. So I'm getting some major ADHD vibes from you. And when I started thinking, like, where exactly am I going to go with Bradley? It's like, how successful you have been. I'm, I'm going to, like, I don't even know how to put everything in words, but how successful you have been and you are by making others successful. And it's kind, it's kind of in a way where it makes me feel like you don't just grab at opportunities to be like, I need to utilize you and I need to utilize you and I see your talent. It's just that you see a person and you like absorb them and make them better than when you met that. I don't even know how to articulate everything that I'm saying. So that's where I want to go with this. Like the success of you in making successes of others and everything that you're doing. Do you feel like you kind of I don't know what your origin story is and we don't have a lot of time to get into it, but do you feel like, do you feel like you just lucked into this? Like this is just like you look backwards and you're like, how in the hell did I do that? Or is this a bunch of blood, sweat and tears? You know, uh, that's, that's probably one of the nicest things anybody's ever said about me. So I really appreciate that. Um, uh, there is a tremendous amount of luck, uh, involved, but at the same time, you know, I said a couple like a week ago on Instagram, I have a friend uh, who doesn't believe in luck. He thinks every chance is created, and I agree with that to some degree. I think it's a matter of so it's like my mo is I'm going to so so there's two things I do relationship wise. Number one, I put myself in the right rooms with no agenda. Okay, so like last week I went to a mastermind meeting that I probably could have missed, but there was going to be a couple heavy hitters there. And I go to that meeting with no agenda whatsoever. I just want to put myself in positions to succeed and let the chips fall where they may. Does that make sense? So, for example, uh, we, we got to interview Gary Vaynerchuk on our podcast, which is probably like probably the most sought after podcast guest in the world because he's going to immediately increase your downloads. I actually had dinner with him six months before and didn't even bring up my podcast. Uh, didn't, whereas most people would have went for the right hook, like this is the one chance I'm going to get right. Um, very intimate setting, you know, 15 or 20 people hanging out with Gary V. I didn't bring my podcast up. It was more important to me that he knew who I was, i.e. we had a relationship 
rather than the off chance that he might say yes to doing a podcast. And what that dinner propelled us to was getting to know who the right people were on his team to make that podcast happen, right? Um, so, so, so I put myself in positions in circles to succeed. Number two, when I'm talking to those people, whether it be uh, whether it be an insurance agent, whether it be a customer, or whether it be a carrier CEO, my only agenda is to build a relationship. Everything else comes secondary. Even when I'm meeting with a client regarding their insurance, my number one goal is to build a relationship with you. And I don't care if any business comes from it. And you know, just like every insurance agent listening to this knows, you build the relationships, the good stuff's going to come from that. You know what I mean? So I think those, yeah. those two things, that's probably what you're kind of seeing from a lot of this, you know? And, and, and truthfully, like, you know, a lot of the different balls that I have in the air, and I do have a lot of them, uh, there's, there's two ways I'm able to accomplish that. Is this a, it's an important question. Uh, my friend Andrew Ryan told me the other day, he's like, I don't know how you do everything you do. And granted, there are some days that at the end of the day, I feel like I've taken years off my life. For real? But the, the two ways I'm able to do that is one, if you look at every project I'm involved in or every company I'm involved in, uh, right now I am, uh, and this is not to, to boast, but right now I have, I either am involved day to day or at least weekly with about seven different companies. Some of them I've started, some of them I haven't. The way that I'm able to juggle all that is every one of them is parallel to the other one. Okay, so for example, we have an insurance agency, right? I also have a marketing company. I didn't go start a marketing company for uh, contractors, right? I started a marketing company for insurance agents. So essentially, all we're doing is creating content for our insurance agency clients that's exactly like the content we're doing for my agency. Or not exactly like, but similar, right? So it, it's parallel. So it's easier to run those two at the same time rather than do something completely off the wall. You know what I mean? The podcast is another company, right? Because we, we make money from the podcast. Like it's, it's, even though it's a podcast, it's not an insurance agency, we're talking to insurance agents. So everything is kind of associated with something else. And then the second thing is, is I have a team. I'm not scared to hire people to, to handle things. Uh, for me and I'm not scared to delegate. I'm a big believer in either <laughs> automating, delegating, or outsourcing. Amen. So that's kind of how I'm able to juggle everything. I think that's one of the biggest struggles that I had as an account manager. Since I'm I'm not on the producer side, um, I did a lot of in-house producing, but saw myself more um, top heavy on account managing is just trying to get delegated to the way I needed to be like, let me take that from you. You put me here for a reason. Trust me to do it. So that's a that's a big trust step that a lot of producers and agency owners do struggle with is allowing themselves to delegate. And then once they've handed that task off, letting that person handle it. So speaking to the delegating and automating, what I, I want to backtrack. What was this... Uh, recognition that you got the Safeco's agency of the future. What does that entail? Yeah, so Safeco, uh, Safeco Liberty Mutual, they've been doing it for a few years um, where you have to apply for it. Um, it's not something that you're just selected out of air. You have to apply for it. It's essentially agencies are able to give their, their thesis as to how they're using technology in their insurance agency. And the ones that are the most tech savvy, the most forward thinking, essentially win this award. The reason we did it is with that comes a $5,000 donation to charity of your choice. Um, my wife and I are both involved in the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We actually have a, an event for Make-A-Wish today, as well as uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters, who ultimately who got our donation. And uh, the way they did it is they have a national winner which I think was Parity So Insurance the year that we won. And then they do a regional, so based on where your agency is located. So we won the Agency for the Future for the Southeast United States, uh, so, you know, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Florida, and so forth. Um, it's been very beneficial for us in that, obviously I'm a big fan of Liberty and Safeco, but from a carrier from a carrier appointment standpoint, it doesn't hurt to tell a new carrier, hey, we won this award with Liberty Mutual, right? So. So that was essentially what that was. That was in 2019. So is the future now? 
Is it in the past or are we still moving towards the future? I think we're still moving towards it. Insurance is never going to be on the bleeding edge of technology. In fact, if you look- Why really, can't it be? It's just <laughs> because of carriers and Ivans and all that kind of stuff. But I think if- If Ivan was alive today. I know, right? I think <laughs> if a really good kind of litmus test you can do is look at other industries that are similar to insurance and look at what's going on technology-wise in those industries, it gives you kind of a good like basis from where insurance is heading. You know what I mean? Because things tend to hit other industries before they hit insurance. For example, yeah. a friend of mine who's in marketing texted me a few years ago, and he said, and he's, he's plays an insurance space some, so he was in like a couple of insurance groups. And he said, oh my God, why is everyone in insurance just now figuring out that they could use VAs? He's like, <laughs> most other industries have been using VAs for 10 years. I'm like, yeah, it's because things are delayed. It's kind of like fashion, right? You go to Europe, you're going to see things that don't look like what people wear here. Right. Eventually they make their way over to the United States. It's kind of that way. So, you know, that's kind of one of the things that I like to do is pay attention to other industries and see kind of what they're doing. Uh, specifically the Agent of the Future Award that we won in 2019 uh, it was for the Southeast United States. So they pick one national winner and then they pick, I think, four winners regionally, which the reason we applied for it was for, you know, we were a new agency at the time and it benefited us greatly getting carrier appointments, right? Uh, and it still does to this day. And the award's sitting in my front lobby. So when carriers come and visit What us, did you say? You have to put yourself in positions to succeed. You were just putting yourself in the position right. to it, exceed by making that application. Exactly. Million, million percent. Uh, the specific thing we were doing, uh, which unfortunately that, that kind of won us the award, which unfortunately got shelved, uh, not due to our own doing, was we were at the time developing an Alexa skill that would allow people to order auto ID cards or copies of their policies via Alexa. And the way it kind of worked was a lot simpler than what it sounds. Um, it essentially ping the management system and then the management system would essentially email the whatever the document was that we had on file. That is boss. Um, Did that ever work out? It never it never came to Dang it. fruition because of things outside of my control. And I've been so busy on other projects that I haven't been able to to revisit it. Um, so we're we're still gonna do it. It's just kind of it's tabled for right now. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, no, that was, that was, that really meant a lot to me. You know, I'm a huge fan of Liberty Mutual. I'm a huge fan of Tyler Asher. Tyler Asher is probably my favorite carrier CEO, honestly. And he does listen to insurance podcasts. So um, <laughs> he listens to this one. Are you um, listening now? Tyler? But uh, I think Tyler, Tyler does a great job at Liberty and Setco. So yeah, it really meant a lot to us. And it gave us a little bit of validation for what we were doing because it's kind of how we operate is so different than every other agency here. You know, and, and when we started our agency, the kind of the vibe amongst some of our competitors here locally was like, oh, that's cute. You know, they started their little agency, but then immediately to win an award like that from a Aren't you blue so blood. Cute. Bless here, your heart. Yeah. <laughs> to, win an, to win an award really meant a lot. So. Well, that's awesome. So speaking of putting yourself in the right room which is something I've been trying to do since I've been here at the National Alliance. Like I said before, I stayed in the shadows. I love the shadows. The shadows are a nice place to be. But that was at an agency where I didn't control much. I just did what I needed to do to further the vision of my agency leader, right? So now that I'm here at the National Alliance, what I do here and, and doing the education that Kat and I do, we write the education and we review the education and we try to develop new stuff we need to put ourselves in the right room so that we can make sure that what we're doing stays relevant and yep. not dated for yep. the agents that are up and coming. Because it, I think we've all heard it before. The industry is stale and pale. And male. And, and pale. male. <laughs> and, that's, and that's where I think 99.9% .9 of carrier reps are missing the boat on. Yeah. Because you would be shocked at the number of carrier reps I have that come in my office that have no idea that I have a podcast, 
Right. Well, they're not have, exactly. They're they not don't, cyber they don't play, their agents. They don't play in what I call insurance land like we should, and they should because if they would listen to podcasts and listen to you know, watch YouTube videos and kind of play in this world that we pay attention to, it oh, would be a lot more the- beneficial for their agents. And they could say, Hey, I was listening to this podcast and I heard about yes, this. right. People are missing the boat without realizing they're missing the boat. That's what I'm going to say. I agree. Absolutely. Which is why it's refreshing to see how many ways you're using social media. So since being here at the National Alliance, I've been kind of observing and trying to learn, you know, off the coattails of other people and try to put myself in the in the right places. And I'm getting better at it because I've recently asked permission to put myself in the right place at your event, the One City World Tour, which is uber exclusive to active agents. So like I said in my email, I'm sitting over here clutching my pearls with my active license, praying to the event gods that you guys will let us in because, oh my gosh, you guys had so much going on. And being in places like that is a great way for me, for Kat, and even for, I mean, all of our, I can't wait to see what kind of information you guys spread there so I can bring it back to our academic directors because we need to be in the faces of agents to make sure that our education is relevant to them. So let's talk about your one city world tour coming up in denver colorado which i'm really excited about because i've never been to denver anyways but and you're doing it at the mile high stadium which i don't even know what that means but it sounds legit (laughs) yeah so let's go there what is it what are you doing here yeah so we scott and i've wanted to do an event for a while um you know i think there is a little bit of an opportunity right now in the insurance conference space for an insurance conference that Um, not just agency owners can go to, but anyone associated with an agency in any capacity. We wanted to put together a a good cast of characters. Uh, Great. You know, people have no idea how much thought we put into the guests we have on our podcast. Um, I'm sure you guys can appreciate that. And it's it's the same case with this. You know, we've tried to bring speakers that either a uh, you know, a lot of you guys go to these conferences. It's similar to podcasts. Like you listen to podcasts, and you probably hear a lot of cases. There's a lot of uh, cross pollination of guests. Same thing with conferences. If you go to these conferences, a lot of the same speakers, right? I've even started declining a few speaking engagements because it's an organization I spoke to last year, and I'm like, I'm not going to bring as much value as you want me to. So, so there's that. So we tried to be very intentional with the guests that were with the speakers. You know, we don't have anybody selling anything. Uh, we actually have no sort of our mantra is no vendors, no carriers, just agents. And that's nothing against vendors or carriers. You know, it it allows us to to put people in a room and the agents that attend know that they're not going to be sold to, right? right? When these people speak to them, they're going to leave it all out on the field, no pun intended. And it's not going to be a it's not going to be a sales contest. You know, they're not going to have to walk through a vendor hall and get hounded by whatever technology, whatever vendor right. wants to try and sell them something. Even Nothing though the vendor the swag is always cool. Correct. <laughs> Nothing, and we're going to have some cool swag. Everybody, so everybody that comes gets a t-shirt, among other things. So that's going to be kind of cool. I and can't it's a wait. T-shirt, it's, a t-shirt, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a t-shirt you're going to want to wear. Oh, put, good. Say, okay. Yeah, we're going to try to do, uh, I'm probably, probably going to kick myself for announcing this in case we don't do it. We're going to try to do 10 NFTs uh as tickets which is going to be at a higher price point than the tickets that are online and anyone that bought a ticket you can upgrade to the nft and so so anybody who doesn't know uh, what an nft is that's a non-fungible token and it's basically like a digital collector item correct correct so we've got we're gonna we're gonna we're still this is still like this is nowhere near ready but basically we're gonna have 10 nfts each one of those nfts comes with lifetime access to the event so you buy that NFT, as long as you own that NFT, you can come to this same event every year for free. That we're, we're going to have 10 prizes, okay? So each NFT is going to have, and this is like literally like you guys are like the first people to, to know about this. We got the uh, exclusive. Here, here, <laughs> um, the, uh, so each NFT is going to be associated with, and if you listen to this in the morning where you get one of these, just reach out to me because it may have been something we didn't do. and I can make it up to you. But uh, we're going to do 10 NFTs. Each NFT is going to be associated with a prize. So we have things like a guest spot on our podcast, a free year of glove box, um, a free year of marketing services from my marketing agency. Awesome. Uh, Mr. David Carruthers threw in 
a year of one-on-one coaching. I cannot tell you how much that would actually cost if you tried to buy right? that, right? Yeah, no, I heard about that one. That's awesome. Uh, Taco Bot is a chat bot service for insurance agents. You get free. So, that so will not leave my a- messenger alone. <laughs> 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 Shout out to CJ. Uh, so I did so we've talk got, about like over a year ago, and it still hits me up. It's like, what's up, girl? How you doing? Right? Exactly. <laughs> it's like talk. CJ's over there sliding in the DMs. <laughs> um, but so so we've got all these, and CJ is one of our speakers. So we've got all these prizes that come. So you get something with the NFT, um, and it's it's just kind of like luck of the draw. So that's kind of just something like kind of cool, different, you know, that we're doing for people. Um, and, and if, if we do it, by the time you hear this, they may only be, be available in the secondary market, which is fine. You can still buy them. But anyway, so that's kind of <laughs> the idea. We're just, we're just going to try to try to do something a little different, very intimate. We're only taking a hundred people, the venue. So we tried to book, we were going to book a hotel conference room and it was stupid expensive, like, like outrageously expensive. And I told Andy at Glovebox, who was kind of handling the venue, I was like, before we do this, reach out to Mile High Stadium and see if, which is where the Denver Broncos play at, and see if they have a, uh, a spot that we could rent. Because all of these nice, nicer football stadiums have like meeting rooms off of the field that they will rent. Um, and since renting a conference room is not like a top source of income, like it would be for like a hotel, usually you get pretty good deals. And sure enough, it was like outrageously less expensive than the hotel. Well, so... And I said, you know, mm-hmm. it gives people the perception like, holy crap, Mile High Stadium, when really it's just this little conference room. But yeah. it's, a, it's a cool conference room it looks with a great glass wall. <laughs> it overlooks the field. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a great time. I would not miss it. You know, beginning of January. Yeah, January in Denver, it's mm-hmm. gonna be cold. But this is gonna be an event like no other. So um, I have to ask. Um, yeah. You know, because when I saw, I mean, I was really excited when I went to get my ticket. I see Mile High Stadium. And again, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be a huge thing. But you mentioned wanting to keep it limited to 100 people. Why so exclusive? Aside from just, just the really cool people, prizes. Yeah. 100 agents. Right. 100 agents. Yeah. Right. You know, just to be completely transparent, to not bite off more than we could chew. I would Reasonable. love to I would love to go and throw the big conference, um, which I would so love to. Is this your this first too. conference that you're throwing? This is the second one I've done. I, I did I did one uh, three years ago. That's how I got to know Gary. Gary actually spoke at it. So I've done the big conference. Uh, we did it here in Mobile. Uh, there was it was in the uh, there's a uh, a college football all star game that's hosted in Mobile every year called the Senior Bowl, mm-hmm. and we basically did it in conjunction with them. So it was like the intersection of sports and business. So we had like John Gruden, Gary Vaynerchuk, John Gruden, and Kyle Shanahan were our keynotes for that so i've done the big conference i've i've lived through the stress of the big conference not was not ready to to take that on right now to be completely honest so we're hoping it's something that starts small and grows um and based on the interest we've seen i think it'll definitely be something we do every year assuming we can provide enough value we got a few surprises in store for you guys you know i was talking with scott this morning about some of the things i'm going to have him do that are ridiculous and uh it'll be a good time that sounds like a lot of fun but why is it important to you to do this though? Because with a hundred, I mean, planning an event is a big thing. I hate and it. like we <laughs> said, when we started the podcast, what I get from cyber stalking you, I'm just going to, I'm not denying it anymore. What okay. I get from cyber stalking you is that you are so successful by making others successful. So why is this event important to you? Or if it helps anymore, like, what do you want your attendees to walk away with? Like, what is, the big aha moment that you're hoping that they have? I'm hoping that they can pick up one or two really, really solid things that they can go back and implement in their agency to move the football down the field. Again, no pun intended. You know, we all go to these conferences and we come away with a million ideas and we don't take action on any of them. Yeah. Right. I want people to go there and say, okay, this is my one or two concise things that I'm going back. I'm going to talk to my team. And we're going to implement these and it's going to help us actionable things. You know, when I speak, one of the reasons I don't offer like paid consulting or anything like that is I never want to stand on a stage and speak and not be able to just give everybody everything, right? Like when I go speak, I'm going to speak until I feel like everybody in that audience has gotten something of value out of it. Yeah. Um, I don't want to have to hold something back so you can buy the $99 course, right? 
So this kind of a, this is kind of the a larger version of that, right? Everybody that's speaking understands this is going to be a really big deal for those hundred agents in attendance. At the same time, you know, I mean, that's a hundred people that we can affect the lives and the businesses of, which is yes. going to be awesome. So. And then it spreads like wildfire. But one thing, one question that I had as you were speaking is, and it's very true what you said, you go to conferences and you either just come back with amazing swag and nothing else other than that, <laughs> right. or you come back with a ton of ideas and then they don't get implemented. What do you think is the hindrance behind like even really amazing ideas? I can't really, like when I was in the agency, my principal sent me to a conference with Roger Sitkins. We went through some sales, tra some sales training with, I loved it. I came back with some wonderful ideas, started getting them implemented, but there was just this lag and, and lack of enthusiasm to really dive into them. And what do you think is the, is the hang up about taking these ideas and running with them? Because there's 2000 people at the conference and the people that put on the conference can't make sure that everybody's doing what they need to do. Ah. When there's a hundred people and Scott Howell calls you in two weeks and says, Hey, are you doing this thing that you, I love it. So micro conference. That's where Can we call this a micro conference? Sure. That's awesome. Well, but yeah, I'm it'll excited. be a great time. I mean, anybody that's listening that wants tickets, onecityworldtour.com, any city world tour spelled out dot com. Um, everything's on there, hotels on there, probably might be sold out by the time you listen to this. Yeah. But if you shoot so, me a DM, if you go on the website and it's sold out, shoot me a DM, we can we can hook you up. Awesome. That's awesome. And you're planning to do this again and again and again, right? We're hoping it's an every year kind of thing. So that's amazing. Well, I can't wait to come and be a fly on that wall. That's how I felt when I was at Tennessee. Like once I found out how exclusive it was, I wanted those young agents to get everything they could out of the speakers that were there. And so I just hung around in the back and waited to like pounce every once in a while, but just kind of stay in the back. And that's what I'm really hoping to do here is to just really mingle and figure out what is connecting with these guys from the speakers that are there, which is an all-star speaker lineup, by the way. So if you don't even plan on going, at least yeah. check out the website and check out the speakers because you'll probably change your mind. I mean, we've got Daniel Song, who has 1.3 million followers on TikTok and a freaking amazing story going from being on food stamps to running a multi-million dollar business. Yeah. Um, we have Mick Hunt, who is an, he's, he's an agency consultant, but he formerly an agency owner, built a $30 million, $35 million agency in like four years and sold that. Um, he's kind of new on the scene. He hasn't been doing a ton of speaking at some of these same events that we see, Dustin. So kind of catching him at the kind of beginning of doing a lot of his speaking. So a lot of people want to hear him. Of course, we got me, Scott, Andy Ryan, Joe Hollier understands NFTs and crypto and blockchain better than anybody. He's my I know. Guy. I'm going yeah. right to him then. <laughs> yeah, so he's I'm, gonna he's I'm gonna trying talk to about... figure something out to talk to agents about NFTs and give them some education on because this crap is gonna blow up eventually. It's not gonna be something so, now that right. everybody's it's used to crypto. Away. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that everybody's used away. to crypto and, and lag behind on crypto like what is this? Is this really mm -hmm. a thing? NFTs yeah. are gonna be yeah. He's going to give his thesis on how he thinks crypto and blockchain is going to affect insurance um, in our industry. There's a lot in there that could disrupt insurance. Uh, of course, David Carruthers was our first speaker to commit. Super, super grateful to him. Um, yeah. We've got uh, the mayor, Heath Sharon. Uh, mm -hmm. Solid lineup. It's going to be awesome. I'm super pumped. Absolutely. Heath Sharon and I live, live too far apart from each other. I'm really? in Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah. yeah. So I don't it's like he'll make fun of me because he used to come into my office all the time without appointments. And I wasn't really keen on it because I was super busy. Uh, and so he thought I hated his guts for a really long time. Apparently, after coming to the National Alliance and I was able to slow down a little bit. He's like, we're best friends. <laughs> there is nothing that gets under my skin more than a rep showing up here expecting mm -hmm. to meet with me on the drop of a hat without at least give me a phone call. Right. Are you listening? He. <laughs> I, look, I'm, go ahead and get my little business card because I know the only reason you stop by here is you're at the agency down the street. You got to show your boss that you came by here. Here's a business card. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, I'll give you as much of my time as anybody, anybody listening to this. I'll give you as much of my time you want as long as you let me know ahead of time. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, Bradley, I've had such a fun time talking to you. Yeah, I think fun. Kat has been, she's been smiling and giggling the whole time. And what I've learned about you today is that you have a lot of balls that you're juggling. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really terrible at trying to make funny little puns. 
But you are juggling so much, but you have found so much success by just seeing each person and only seeking a relationship with no strings attached, which is exactly what this One City World Tour sounds like. So I'm Mm -hmm. even more infatuated with you and your team and, and the whole circle of influence that you guys have around you. And I, I'm so thankful that you guys are allowing us to come and be flies on your walls and participate with you guys, not as vendors, but spectators, and just, you know, see what you guys are doing for agents. Because it's like just hearing you say, when I ask what the difference is about why you go to a conference and you come away and you don't implement anything, it's like, because Scott's not calling you two weeks later mm-hmm. asking you how you're doing. It's just, it's like, I called it a micro conference, but it's more like a little micro fire starter. It's just, it's mm-hmm. going to make such a difference to those 100 people. And even if it only made a difference to 75 or 50 of those 100 people, that's going to snowball and get even bigger. And I love, I love that message. I love what you are doing and just, but you're not just doing it for other people. You're also killing it on your own. And I don't know how you do it. That's insane. Well, well, and the the good thing is, is, you know, if we go to a thousand person conference, right? and you're not getting what the speaker's saying, but it's something you think you could possibly, you're not going to raise your hand in a thousand P, but you can do that at this. This is the idea is to be more collaborative. And yeah, and on your point, you know, one reason why I'm not scared to tell other agency owners is like, hey, you need to do this and it will work is because I'm I'm running an insurance agency that's successful that we do all those things. I'm never going to give somebody advice on something that I haven't done myself. And if you look at the content I put out pre-January 2019, for example, almost none of it it was on managing a team or dealing with employees or HR issues or anything like that because I didn't do any of that. Now I'm doing that kind of stuff. So I'm talking more about culture and things like that. I think you saw my culture talk in Tennessee. So so like there's certain people out there that like to rag on podcasters online or what, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like, look, hey, you can talk all the trash you want. I'm running an agency and doing the things I'm talking about. So yeah. it doesn't really bother me, right? I'm an insurance agent who happens to podcast, not a podcaster who happens to be in insurance. Not that there's anything wrong with one or the other, but it's just, it's like, I feel like my agency is the proving ground for the things that I talk about. You practice what mm-hmm. you preach, brother, and you're Correct. a great preacher. That's for sure. <laughs> Anyways, well, thank you so much for having this conversation today. I Absolutely. am super excited about the One City world tour in denver colorado and i don't think he said the date but it's january 21st and the 22nd or is it 20th 20th and the 21st january i was close dang like i know what i'm talking about so i am super excited scott doesn't even know where it is we were on a podcast the other day like (laughs) i think it's the january 13th and the 14th like that's completely wrong so i was about to say go ahead and go over the insurance guys podcast because their recent podcast is about the one city world tour and they even have the glove box guys on there and they're talking about everything one city world tour and yes scott got the dates wrong because i was like holy crap i booked my flight wrong So I'm excited. I can't wait to see you again in person. Maybe this time Likewise. I'll have the courage um, to actually speak to you. Scott just felt more warm and oh, and- that's a first. <laughs> that's a first. And well- Normally, I'm the one that people go to and they stay away from Scott. Oh, really? Well, maybe it's weird personalities gravitate towards each other. Anyway, so I can't wait to see you guys there again. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thanks for hanging around for another Awkward Conversation in Insurance. Stay tuned for new episodes from Awkward Insurance wherever you listen to your podcasts. And be sure to check out the National Alliance on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or at SCIC.com. Now go forth and be awkward. Toodles! Toodles!